You know, I still live in a sane society where we laugh at buffoons. We actually have this word. Like, if you go out in public and you have such a terrible take, people will laugh at you. Next time you have a take, people will go, Oh, you're the guy with the takes, right? <laughs> what else are you going to say? All right. For some reason, this doesn't happen in America. And it encourages people that have, like, some of the most ridiculous and mentally ill takes imaginable to be actually placed in positions of authority. I mean, I'm going to laugh at America as a nation now if you guys don't stop that shit. Like, like, you need to laugh at these people. How can you say that Japanese RPGs, the term, is racist? Like, the moment that comes out of your mouth, the entire audience needs to have their sides in orbit. Like, everyone needs to laugh at you. You need to be laughed out of every conversation. Like, the moment you even try to say something, people need to start laughing because they remind the dumb thing you said last time. But for some reason, again, like, these people are allowed to exist in, in, in civilized discourse. So, listen to this, okay? Uh, apparently, Hideki uh, Kamiya, I hope I pronounce his name correctly, thinks that Japan should be proud of G GPRPG. Of course you should. Of course, it's, it's like a term that accurately describes one of Japan's achievements in entertainment. Yes, Japanese RPGs are a thing. They des describe a style of gameplay. It it's a very accurate term. Like, it makes me think differently between a game that's like Diablo, which is or, or Baldur's Gate, which is a Western RPG, and a Japanese RPG like Final Fantasy. It's a perfect term. Anyone that complains about this makes me laugh. And not only that, I also consider that they have absolutely nothing of value to add in any conversation ever. Like, I just stop listening to those people, and I suggest you do the same. So, let's see what's happening. Well, apparently, uh, the vice president of Platinum Games has said that he thinks Japan should be proud of the term. And by the way, this is the nth time where actual Japanese people are upsetting the Americans, because, like, they want to get outraged on behalf of the Japanese people, like, that. That that's how they get the spotlight, that's how anyone even remotely pays attention, it's like, oh, those poor Japanese people, oh, let me position myself in a position of authority where I can defend them, and the Japanese people are going, no, fuck off, okay, we're not upset, we're not offended, and, and it makes them absolutely livid, I can see it on Twitter when it's happening real time. It makes them so upset, it makes them so angry, and it makes me so happy. It makes me so happy because I get to see, oh, so, like, uh, you, you're not really upset that they're victims. Because if you were, you know, like, like if you actually want to help someone, you have someone that's, let's say, you know, you know, being escorted out of the water, and you think they're drowning, right? So you go to give mouth to mouth because, like, you want to help them, but you realize that they're fine. You're like, oh, well, thank God that they're fine, right? But this is not how those people behave. They, they, they're actually upset that you're fine. They, they will rather put you back in the water so that they, when they pull you out, they can get the savior complex and be like, oh, see, I saved you. Even though I put you there to begin with. But anyway, right, so the term JRPG was popularized in the early 90s. No one fucking cares about the history of a word, all right? Like, when people use a word, they do not care about the heritage or the roots of the word. Like, if, if I say the word food, I don't know where it came from. I don't give a shit, Okay. But apparently, like, they have to go to the history. It was popularized to differentiate between PC RPGs, which were made by Western developers, and console RPGs, which are made by Japanese people. However, in the years since, as interest in Japanese RPGs declined, there were some instances of discriminatory language to describe them, both by critics and developers. Like, so fucking what? See, this is where the mental retardation has to kick in. Like, like if I say, I don't like American baseball, does that mean I hate Americans? Does that mean I'm racist? Is this what you're saying? Because if you're saying it, you're funny as fuck, my dude. You should seriously consider a job in stand-up comedy, because you're doing a flawless job at it. Like, if someone doesn't like Romanian folklore music, does that mean that he doesn't like Romanians? Like, Japanese RPG is a style of game. It's not for everyone. Not everyone enjoys it. It's fine if you don't like it. And you can use it as a pejorative term as well. Who fucking cares? I'm willing to bet there are Japanese people that use Western RPGs as a pejorative term. Like, so what? Do they, like, should they be forced to like Western RPGs? Or if they don't like it, should they be forced to lie about it? Or to hide it? Like, should they be ashamed that they don't like Western RPGs? Of course not. I'm willing to bet that there are so many Japanese artists that absolutely despise and are disgusted by the Cal Arts. Does that mean that they hate Americans? I don't think so. But like, should they stop using Cal Arts as a pejorative term? Fuck no. I use it as well. Am I racist towards Americans if I don't like CalArts?
I think it's one of the worst type of art form. You know what? It's not the worst. Like, there's corpo art. Corpo art is worst. So, there's that. But anyway. However, in years since, as interest in Japanese-made RPGs declined, they started using it as, uh, as a slur. Uh, earlier this year, Final Fantasy XVI producer uh, told Skill Up that he wasn't a big fan of JRPG term at all, saying that in the past it felt like a discriminatory term with negative connotations. Okay, that's his opinion. Who cares? I find it hilarious. Th th that's th a, a really bad take. It's like, oh, it's discriminatory. Why? Because people don't like JRPGs? Wow. You, you have such issues in your life. S such first world problems. Oh my god, people don't like uh, certain video games. Oh, the humanity. You, go, go to the United Nations. Complain about your human rights getting violated. For us Japanese developers, the first time we heard it, it was like a discriminatory term. As though we were being made fun of for creating these games. Okay, that's your take. I, I, I refuse to believe it. Like, if someone says uh, that Western RPGs are bad or whatever, I, I would not feel it discriminatory. I would say that's his opinion, right? So, like, your take is really bad. I, I really don't care what this person has to say. Like, after this point, like, I, I, I listen to it. Uh, it sounds to me like you're farming victim points for the current year. Like, it's 2023. You probably wouldn't have this take five years ago. You just know that it's going to resonate well with the Westerners. And the game journalists are probably going to run with it. So this is why you're saying. I do not believe that, that, that you genuinely think that the word Japanese RPG is a bad thing. In a recent interview at Platinum Games headquarters, uh, they asked famous Japanese designer creator of Bayonetta and Devil May Cry, if he shared the views. Uh, his answer was extensive and argued that the term is something Japanese developers should be proud of, and in his opinion, cultural differences justify the differentiation of subgenre. I want to marry this man. I'm already married, I have a wife at home, but like, uh, I, I think I need to talk to her about changing religions. I, I will see, like, maybe Islam or something, so I can marry multiple people, and I want to marry Kamiya as well. Kamiya is a genius, he, he is a man of my taste, definitely reflects what I'm thinking, I love you, Kamiya, whatever you are. I have a lot to say on this, he replied. Just to be clear first, though, I have a positive sentiment when it comes to Japanese RPGs, and I do too, by the way. But I don't have anything against someone that doesn't. Like, you're free to like a certain genre of games, and you're free to hate one. I, for example, don't like the genre of sports. Like, like if sports games were only made in the United States, does that make me a racist or something? No, of course not. Uh, in my creative life up until now, there have been two things that left a huge impression on me. Which I still think about it this day. The, the first was a localization issue with the uh, manga First of the North Star. He went to explain in depth, which uh, can be read in the interview, that the first issue of the manga had a scene where a group of thugs on motorbikes were standing on top of a hill overlooking a village. In the background, the manga uses a uh, do, -do, 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 do sound to represent the pressure of the scene. And while it wasn't an actual audible sound, it was being used to create tension. In the localized version, however, the sound was uh, changed for the little vroom. Using language to express a unique atmosphere, such as the something that's fairly unique to Japanese creative tasks, blah, blah, blah. It's something that you can't really express in other cultures. No, I, I understand if you're talking about the localization. But, like, a lot of uh, modern localizers, they don't do this in order to, like, more fit the language. They do it to push their politics. So, if in the original manga someone would say, oh, you're an idiot. In the translation, in the localization, they would say, oh, you're an evil trap supporter, January 6th insurrection, blah, 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 blah. Right? Like... And you can see, like, like, there are on the internet examples after examples after examples where the localization has nothing to do with, like, trying to change the language so that, you know, the Americans understand it better. Like, instead of ramen, they would call it soup or something like that. No, no, no. The, in order to localize, they, they completely change the meaning of the text for no reason whatsoever. Uh, Kamara went on to give a second example based on Ultraman's superhero TV series. He explained that in the Japanese version, he made the sound like a jet engine. And the time it took off, despite not having any visual effects like flames behind it. However, in the Power series, which made in the US, the sound was more subdued because they wanted the sound to be more realistic and much more of visual effects. Yeah. Uh, anyway, right, it's it's a long interview. It's very interesting. I'll probably read it on a live stream. Uh, but basically, no, I, like, it's, it's the most dumb take ever, right? Uh, to, to claim that Japanese RPGs uh, is a racist term. Is a completely ridiculous notion. I don't share it. You shouldn't either. And anyone that said it should be completely disconsidered from any serious debate in the future. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.